Today, I have some great news for 360 panoramic photographers. With the new Adobe Camera Raw update, we have a new 360 photo editing workflow using Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Lightroom. This new workflow does not create any stitch line in your 360 photos. Even adjusting HDR effects like highlights and shadows, clarity and the haze. This saves us hours of using healing brush or clone stamp too. We can now capture 360 photos using raw DNG with cameras like the InStar360 Titan right here, InStar360 Pro 2, or even the InStar360 ONE X, EVO, CoolCam, or GoPro Fusion, and color grade that DNG to look professional. Let me show you how in this in-depth tutorial. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up, the number one YouTube channel dedicated to 360 photo editing for everyone. Adobe Camera Raw just has a major update that allows Photoshop and Lightroom to do 360 aware photo editing. So I decided to show you my new complete workflow so you can be up to date on 360 photo editing. If you follow my Facebook page, I have been posting very impressive aerial 360 photo that get me hundreds of likes. Just to be clear, not gimmicky tiny planet photos, but 360 immersive photography in professional level quality. Some of them are even in gigapixel created with hundreds of individual photos captured with the DJI Inspire 2 with a professional lens. Don't worry, how to capture gigabyte pixel aerial 360 photos will be the next tutorial. And today, I want to focus on the photo editing workflow. No matter what camera you use, if your camera can generate DNG, or better, bracketed HDR DNG, like the InStar360 Titan Pro 2 or the ONE X, you need to master this new workflow. Your photo will stand out from those who use a mobile phone to edit. Before I show you my workflow, let's take a look at the old problem, the stitch line in 360. Take a look at this 360 photo captured with InStar 261 X in Hard Summer Music Festival. We throw in a camera raw filter, heat auto adjustment, reduce the highlight and increase the shadow to bring back lost detail during capture. We also add a good amount of clarity, the haze and vibrancy to make the image pop. Hit OK. Very normal to the photo workflow. If you drop in a offset plugin, you see this ugly stitch line. So you roto brush this out with healing brush or clone stamp too. With the new workflow, this part is gone. By the way, you can always avoid stitch line with PT GUI and HDR software like Photomatic. This has been my workflow if the stitching is involved. But for a camera like the Insta360 Titan, which can do HDR photo with auto stitch, there's no need to buy and use PD GUI or any third party plugin. You end up with a stitch eagle rectangular picture. So your only job left is color grade this stitch DNG raw photos. Here is my workflow. I drop the DNG file into Photoshop. If you open up Adobe Camera Raw, please make sure you update to the latest Adobe Camera Raw to make this work. And you can use Lightroom for this exact same workflow. But 360 Photo will end up in Photoshop for meta injection. So it is better just to avoid Lightroom altogether. In Adobe Camera Raw, I have this Beautiful HDR photo captured with the InStar360 Titan in 11K DNG HDR. It is extremely underexposed. So again, I use auto setting, push the exposure even higher, pull down the highlight and rise the shadow for a more dramatic HDR effects for demonstration purposes. If you are familiar with my style of 360 photography, I use pretty high texture, clarity, dehaze, and vibrancy. 
but not saturation. So my photos always have that hyper reality look. It pop more in VR headset and grab people attention. This is just me. You should dial down and adjust based on your style of photography. One thing it is a must and the advantage of using DNG RAW is under lens correction, check remove chromatic aberration. This remove purple fringes commonly found in fisheye lenses. So definitely remember to check that. You can also do some denoise or noise reduction under detail tab. I would suggest zoom in the image into 100% or more. Look at the noise reduction result to decide how much noise reduction and sharpening you need to do to your image. And that's it. One important thing you need to take note here before you close Adobe Camera Raw is to hold down shift on your keyboard and click open object instead of open images. Then your image in Photoshop will become a smart object. The reason why we work with smart object is that the 360 aware workflow does not work on Camera Raw as a filter right here. It has to be connected directly with Adobe Camera Raw. So if you change your mind, you can always just open the smart object and edit the setting in Adobe Camera Raw. The true power of this entire workflow is the ability to use profile or preset in Lightroom. Any profile or preset you purchase or build will be available within Adobe Camera Raw. Let me show you. Double click and open up Camera Raw again this time on top of your color correction, you click browse profile here. You see under my favorites, I have my signature orange and teal look and a wash out look. I can pick the profile and bam, the whole photo now had this new Instagram travel vlogger look and it's in 360 immersive. You can click OK to apply. This is just like LUT workflow in Adobe Premiere color grading save you hours of works. Bonus tip, level your 360 photos. As you see, this Insta360 Titan photo is not level. Usually, the only way to fix that is to use PT GUI. But you can also use this plugin called Flexify2. In order to use any plugin, you do need to fatten your smart object first. Then just apply Flexify. Make sure your input and output is equal rectangular. Then you can adjust the latitude and spin to level your photos and change longitude for new point of interest. Without going back to PT GUI and stay within Photoshop, it saves you times and time is money. You are welcome. Hit the like button if you enjoy this extra tip. Bonus tips number two, my advanced 360 photo editing workflow. If you take your 360 photo with a consumer camera like the Insta 360 1X or Ricoh Theta Z1 here, you want to do extra works to clean up your raw photo. If you are a long time subscriber here, you know that I like to reward my viewers who stick to the end of a long tutorial. And today, I will reward you with my techniques that will turn your 360 photo from mediocre to great. Just take a look at this before and after color grading photos. And this is what we are going to do next. Go ahead and drop in the DNG file right here. This is actually a very challenging photo. First, it captured with a lower quality consumer camera that installed with your 1X, even in raw DNG it is still not great compared to professional camera rig. So I already do some basic color correction right here. Again, we'll drop the highlight all the way to recover all the highlight because I want to really bring out the sunset right here. Before I go any further, I want to again remind you to enable chromatic aberration. I want to show you how much it's different if you actually use this on a consumer camera. Let's go ahead and zoom in 100%. And actually even more. I want you to pay attention to the outline around her body. Go ahead and enable remote coronary aberration. Pay attention right here. 
the purple fidgets is are gone. Especially for consumer camera like the Ricoh Theta Z1 and Insta360 ONE X or GoPro Fusion, you have to remember using that to remove chromatic aberration. So after that, I want to do some selective color grade right here. I'm going to go to the sun right here. I want to really bring out the golden sunset from California. Go to HSL adjustment right here. And I'm going to use selective color grade right here. This tool. Target adjustment tool right here. And pick out the yellow. And really boost out the saturation right here. Now you see that really orange sunset color really go out right now. And I also want to bring down the luminum just this session to make it look even more dramatic of a sunset. And I also want to go ahead and bring out a saturation of the sky a little bit. Bring down the aluminum of the sky a little bit. But again, I don't want to affect this on people's faces. So go ahead and pick my face right here. Bring down the face saturation, his skin right here. Bring down the skin saturation so we are not over saturate people's faces and also for the ground right here go ahead and select this ground bring down the saturation of the ground and also bring down the lightness of the ground a little bit so there you go now if the selective color grade this picture look a much better now so the next thing i want to do is for it to see photos like this one especially for consumer camera the sharpness is not so great, especially in a VR headset with extra compression during YouTube or other photo website for web delivery. So we want to increase the sharpness of the photo. My trick is go ahead and here, hit down all key on a PC and go ahead and increase the masking tool to make sure we define the edges for sharpening only around the edges, but not sharpening the noise of the photos. Continue hitting all two. Now you can go ahead and increase the amount of sharpening, the radius of sharpening. Like go ahead and increase a lot when we see the edges right here. And then increase the detail of the edges right here, but not the detail of the noise. If you go ahead and pick a look at here, now the image is really sharp. But if you look at the ground, you see that crazy noise kind of, you can see that crazy kind of noise around the ground is due to the small sensor from the one x is not so good in noise especially in kind of low light so we gonna do the noise in a different workflow so i'll show you here i'm not gonna do noise reduction inside camera raw finally i want to repeat myself again the reason why i can do such a dramatic color correction in 360 RAW photos is because the brand new feature in Adobe Camera RAW, the 360 Edge Awareness on the edges. So even I do such a crazy amount of clarity and dehaze, it will not create a steam line on the edges. So go ahead again and hit Shift key and open as a smart object. So the last technique I'm going to show you is denoise. I have this special workflow of denoising. It's using a third party plugin called Topaz denoise AI, and I'm using AI to really denoise my photos. Using a split tool, and really zoom in right here. I'm go ahead and hit auto, just an auto denoising, but I know this photo is very noisy, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a bump up the noise, remove noise level, using AI to remove noise. And I want you to look at the before and after. Before, Lot of color noise, lot of noise on the ground. After it's really smooth ground. If you take a look at her body right here, before really buried and not sharpened at all, and very amount of color noise. And after she looks sharp, pop, and no noise at all. So the difference is dramatic. So go ahead and hit apply. Here you go. Now the final image look really clean, professional, and look like you actually captured with a high quality DSLR instead of an instant with one X. Now let's quality check the stitch line by turning the eco rectangular photo into 360 photo. Under 3D, pick new panorama layer from selective layers. I have no idea why Adobe labeled this as 3D. It is not 3D stereoscopic. It is just mono 360. So I hope Adobe watched this and changed that 
and less confusing for everyone. After we are in 360 mode, we pan down to the nadir. Now we need to clean up and remove the tripod. Please never leave the tripod in your shot, especially if you are working on a pay gate with a real client. I usually do not directly edit the 360 photo. It will slow down your machine if you are working with a big photos. The trick is to copy and paste the tripod onto a new layer. Now pick your healing brush and brush out the tripod legs. I also use the chrome stamp tool as well for pattern ground to have a more precise look. After you are done, merge down the layer and now the tripod leg is gone. Go ahead and move back to the horizon line with the move tool. Now go ahead choose 3D spherical panorama, export panorama and export your final image for Facebook or other 360 photo sharing websites. This workflow also work with 16-bit TIFF files and even PNG. Thank you for watching another in-depth 360 tutorial. The next tutorial, I will teach you from shooting to editing how to create gigapixel aerial 360 photos for professional clients. I will also show you my setting with the Insta360 Pro 2 or the Titan to capture professional HDR photo for Virtual 2. There are lots of noise out there on the Virtual 2 creation, some so-called expert teaching people to capture Virtual 2 using consumer cameras. It really makes the real professional who use DSLR and do professional photo editing look bad. It gives the client a bad taste of what a professional, professionally done virtual tool look like. So take the artist's approach, practice and improve your craft. And I'm here to help. Comment below if you have more questions. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time to see Creator Level Up on Creator Up. Right now, I am in the middle of the jungle in Costa Rica. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here, and I'm with Sebastian, my super awesome DP here. Hey everybody, right now we are in the middle of the jungle in Costa Rica. So in the rainforest, it's got all the rain, so it's raining actually right now, and we have to get the shot, we cannot depend on the weather, so we put a head on top of the camera, we gotta play the top part, we gotta still use the light, and we gotta just get the best of the footage.